Hello, my name is Nick Stasoulis and I work in the USGS office here in Augusta, Maine. This screencast is going to outline best practice options for maintaining and editing information in NWIS site visit when using the SWAMI field computing application. This is a common problem in this paperless world we live in. We collect electronic field notes in SWAMI, load that information into site visit, then realize we need to make a change. In this screencast, we will cover the best practices for how to edit and properly document those changes. Probably the most important point to understand with this entire process is that anytime changes are made in either site visit or an already uploaded SWAMI file, we have to be sure the changes are being properly tracked by making appropriate comments in the right location. There are two general methods for correcting information for a site visit. The first method is to make all edits directly in site visit, except those edits that must be made in the original field application, like manufacturer ADCP software, then re-import it into SWAMI. The other exception in this option is fields that are only available in SWAMI, such as ADCP QA temperatures. The second method is to make all changes in SWAMI and no edits in site visit, except for the few fields that are not available in SWAMI. Let's discuss the first option of making all edits directly in site visit, except those edits that must be made in the original field application, like manufacturer ADCP software, then re-imported into SWAMI. Making edits in site visit is likely more efficient for simple edits, like changing a reference gauge height due to levels but can lead to confusion by users regarding what was edited and where the edit was made. There is also potential for greater differences between the stylesheet view of the original SWAMI file and the stylesheet view of what's in site visit. See the screencast video on stylesheets for more information on the different stylesheet viewing options. Let's show an example of this option. Here we see a site visit that was collected in SWAMI and imported into site visit. This visit was made in June, and after we ran levels at maintenance in August, we found our primary reference point, a lag in the riverbed, had moved during ice out and is at a different elevation than what was used on the day of the visit. Here we are at the sensor inspection for that reference point. Let's update the reference elevations and correct the math for the as-found and as-left readings. Then, we need to go update the sensor readings themselves. The as-found reading is now 4.17, and the as-left reading is now 4.18. We need to document this change. At a minimum, we must document the change in the upper level site visit comment field. We need to know who made the change, when the change was made, and what the original values were. So in this case, I will note my initials, NWS, and that I made an office note April 3rd, 2014. I will also note why I updated the sensor readings and what the original values were. While the minimum requirement is to put the comment documenting the change in the upper level site visit comments, you could also include the comment in the sensor inspection notes so anyone who went directly to the sensor inspection without reading the upper level site visit comments would know it was edited back in the office. Now, let's talk about the other option for making edits, which is making all edits in SWAMI directly and re-importing the updated SWAMI file into site visit. Making all of our edits in SWAMI is likely a more inefficient workflow for edits to the measurement gauge height or other simple adjustments, but is a more consistent process and leads to more consistency between the stylesheet view of the imported SWAMI file and the stylesheet view of the site visit data. Let's show how this option would work using the same example as above, editing a reference sensor elevation due to levels. First, we want to preserve a copy of the original SWAMI file in our local project directory. Here, in our project directory, you can see that I have already created a copy of the original file. And now we will preserve this copy by adding original to the file name.
This not only creates a copy of the original file, but also clearly identifies the fact that this file has been edited and reloaded into Site Visit. Now, let's go to Swami PC and open the field Swami file. To be clear, not the one tagged with original, but the one with the exact same file name that was originally uploaded into Site Visit. First, let's go to the Site Visit Tasks section of SWAMI and select Sensor Inspections. Here, we can select the reference sensor that needs editing and go to the inspection. We will then update the reference elevation and the math here. And go back to the sensor reading and correct that too. Now that the change has been made, we need to document it. We will go back to the main site visit comments and add our comment. Again, we are noting who made the comment, when the comment was made, why changes were made, and what the original values were. This comment could be duplicated in the sensor inspection, but as a minimum, it must be made in the main site visit comments. After saving the updated SWAMI file, we can go to the directory where it was saved and drag and drop the file into Site Visit. I will import an overwrite in this case since the data in Site Visit matches the SWAMI file perfectly, with the exception of my edits, so there is no risk of losing any data that might have been added to Site Visit after the fact. You would want to check the main Site Visit comments before importing and overwriting to ensure there was no information added to Site Visit that could be lost. If using the drag and drop method of loading site visits, saving should only be performed if there have been no violations, which show up with a red X in site visit. Sometimes, the only way to fix a violation is by manually editing the field in site visit. When changes are required to be made in other field applications, such as ADCP measurement processing software, that are not editable in SWAMI, they should be made in those original applications and then processed back through SWAMI. The most likely situation for this to occur is measurements that require a reprocessing of an ADCP transect. Let's show an example of this. First, you would make the edits to the measurement in the manufacturer software and save the file. Let's assume we've done this already. Then, create an original SWAMI file in the local directory, which I've already done. Next, open the field SWAMI file in SWAMI PC. Again, this is the file that does not have original added to the file name. Since we are at the comment field now, let's document the change we are making. In this case, I've made a note that I found the extrap3 recommended extrapolation method only applied to transect 000 in Wind River 2. The user intended to apply this method to all the transects. I found the discharge as 279 CFS, applied the extrapolation method to all of the transects in Wind River 2, and re-imported the corrected file into this SWAMI file. I also made a note that another channel for Finbrook was not reloaded. There is some information that is stored only in SWAMI that we will need to duplicate when recreating the measurement. So it's beneficial to open the original SWAMI file with a style sheet so we can enter that information into SWAMI. Now, we will go to the discharge measurement task in SWAMI and open the measurement. You will notice this measurement has two channels the ADCP channel and a midsection channel, which is an estimate for an inflow. Since the midsection channel is valid, we will only delete the ADCP channel.
Then we can select Import Channel and select our new ADCP file to be imported. We will first confirm that this is a Wind River 2 measurement file. In this case, the ADCP serial number was not picked up on the meter list, so we can select it manually. From the original SWAMI file, enter the channel name, the deployment method, and the suspension method. Since the other information on this page is imported, simply click Measure to move on. On the Acoustic Information page, repopulate the time sync, instrument test, compass, GPS, boat and motor, and moving bed information using the original SWAMI file. Select Temperature Salinity and populate that information as well. Back on the Acoustic Information page, we can repopulate any acoustic channel notes unless they were made in Wind River 2 and imported already. The ADCP measurement summary page should be populated already. Click Done here to move on. Again, fill out the channel summary information using the original SWAMI file as a guide. Unless there is another channel to import, we can select Done. On the measurement summary page, be sure to uncheck auto sequence and manually enter the measurement number. Fill out the remainder of the rating and gauge height information from the original file, as well as any remarks that were made originally. This file can then be saved and dragged into site visit using the import and overwrite option. When re-importing a SWAMI file into site visit, there are some considerations that should be made. There are some activities that only exist in site visit and not in SWAMI. Examples include information related to index velocity or slope. You will need to go into site visit and note this information before re-importing your updated SWAMI file. Then, enter this information back into site visit after re-importing. If the edited SWAMI file is complete, either you are using method 2 of making all edits in SWAMI or no edits have been made in site visit since the original SWAMI import, then the import and overwrite option should be used to import the edited SWAMI file. If your office uses method 1, making edits in site visit, or the original SWAMI file contains only a portion of the field visit, the following three steps must be followed. First, determine which fields have edits in site visit and do nothing. Leave them alone. Then. Determine which fields you need to edit and delete those fields from site visit. These fields will be replaced by the SWAMI file you will correct and re-import. This will often be the entire discharge measurement, but in some cases may be a channel within the measurement and or specific sensor inspections. Reload the SWAMI file using the import option, not import and overwrite. As noted above, the new file should have the same name as the first file loaded. This will ensure that only one version of the file is available in the blob space for the site visit. Document the reload and the edits made with comments at the top site visit level node. As an example of this situation, let's say we found an error with an ADCP measurement and we wanted to re-import the corrected file. 
Our office makes most edits directly in site visit and we find a comment in the main site visit comments about an edit that was made in site visit to document the status of some equipment that was removed from the gauge. In this case, we could delete the measurement from site visit, leaving everything else, and re-import the new ADCP data into the field SWAMI file as we just discussed. When loading the edited SWAMI file into site visit, select import and everything in site visit should be preserved, only adding the new measurement information. There are a few other points we should make as well. While there is latitude regarding what edits can be made in SWAMI versus site visit, a consistent practice must be defined for a water science center and documented in their quality assurance plan. Failure to do so will result in a confusing workflow for hydrographers and lost edits due to SWAMI edits overwriting those done in site visit. As a general rule, either the method of making all changes in site visit except those that can only be made by re-importing the information to SWAMI, or the method of making edits directly in SWAMI should be chosen and used consistently in a water science center. When manually entering information from the original SWAMI file into the edited SWAMI file, such as ADCP acoustic channel notes, these manual entries should be checked to ensure no typographical errors were made. Regardless of which method an office uses, in either case, it is important for all users to note that some data are only available on the stylesheet view of the imported file and some data only on the stylesheet view of the database. It goes without saying that it is critical that everyone is using the latest stable version of the SWAMI application and the latest style sheet. If you have questions on the options for maintaining and editing information in NWIS Site Visit when using the SWAMI field computing application, please contact the SWAMI help group at the email address shown or visit the FSIS webpage at the address shown.